Good afternoon. I'm Miroslav. I'm the CEO of Carnot Computing. And um, we are a team of 27 people based in Paris, France. And as you probably understood, we are providing cloud computing services to companies. But in a very special way, because our computing is heating homes and buildings for free. This today, this is the backstage of data center, of, of cloud computing, sorry. Um, it's giant infrastructures called data centers, concentrating thousands of servers, generating huge quantities of heat and waste heat. And all these servers have to be power supplied, but also because of the concentration of all these machines, they have to be cooled down. And on the top roof of the Amazon data center under construction, you can see a lot of them. And all these cooling systems also consume huge quantities of electricity. And as a result of that, today data centers already consume 3% of the world electricity. In France, data centers are consuming 10% of the French electricity. And we even have some peaks. There is a city stuck to Paris called Aubervilliers. In this city, data centers consume 50% of the electricity of the city. And that starts to be a big problem. Because this amount is also doubling every five years. Because our needs for computing power is dramatically increasing. I would like to show you as an example, some, in, in the 3D animation sector, something I like to call the Shrek Law. I guess everyone knows the Shrek Ogre. Now, today in the animation industry, the pictures are no longer painted. They are rendered by computers. So to perform the full rendering of Shrek 1, it took 5 million hours of computation. To perform the whole rendering of, of, of Shrek 4, it took 50 million hours of computation. Today, blockbusters from Disney or Pixar require more than 100 million hours of computation. So just imagine, you take a powerful computer, you launch the rendering of Frozen or Zootopia, and you just have to wait for 100 million hours. <laughs> that's a long time. So that's why this industry is using thousands, massively thousands and thousands of, of computers to render, to make the animations. But this trend is likely the same in the banks, in insurance companies, in weather forecast, um, medical research, etc., It's likely the same trend. So on one side, we have these data centers with a lot of excess heat, and they pay to get rid of it. And on the other side, we have homes, buildings, commercial buildings in need for heat, and they pay to get it. So at counter computing, we thought that probably these computations could be done in a more effective way. And here is our solution. This is the Curad. At Carnot Computing, we designed the first computing heater using microprocessors as a heat source. I mean, my, I mean computers as a heat source. So the computers are inside the heater. Just imagine, you take the server out of the data center, and you place it onto a wall in the form of a heater into your home. So this is our solution. This is the Curad. This is our data center. At least I should say part of our data center because as you probably understood, our data center is not concentrated. It's not centralized. Our data center is distributed. So how does it work? It's just like a normal heater, electrical heater. The difference is that it's connected to the internet for fiber optics. You just, there is a screen, you set the temperature you want to have in the room, and according to this temperature, to this target, the system is going to ask on the cloud in our central system for more or less computation to make its processors heat to meet your target temperature. And on the other side of the cloud, we have clients like banks, 3D animation studios, pushing their computations into your home. So we are doing computation according to the needs for heat. But this is only the visible part of the iceberg. Alongside, we developed a unique computing distribution platform called the Cure. 
And this is the big, a big piece of cake. We are mainly working on that. How to split and how to take the jobs of our clients and distribute them securely into the buildings on, on the Curet farm. In this way, we can offer greener, faster, and cheaper computing power to companies, and we can offer free, green, and smart heating to buildings. So, because we do not build a data center, we don't have the capex on the opex of the data center, and we don't even pay for the servers inside the data centers because the people in need for heat, they buy the, the curads. Because of that, we are able to offer computing power up to four times cheaper than our competitors. And our competitors on the computing part are, I would say, small American startups called Google, Amazon, Microsoft Azure. But we have an IT, IT footprint of the computing which is slashed down by 78%. Because actually, from the engineering point of view, we are doing free cooling of our processors, and people don't have to spend additional energy to heat their homes. On the heating part, we do don't pay any electrical bill, because inside the QRAD there is an electrical counter counting all the electricity consumed by the machine, and on a monthly basis, all the electricity is refunded. So you are heating your home for free. In addition to that, imagine if you have a curad. I have seven curads in my apartment for more than three years now. I have in every room a power supply device connected to the internet and embedding intelligence because I have the computers inside. That's the perfect pl platform to start thinking about smart sensors and smart features. And that's exactly what we've done. In our new generations of QRADs, we have more than 20 sensors and interfaces, um, such as, an, such as an, an example is air quality monitoring, uh, motion sensors, uh, wireless ch charger, and ocean technology, etc. in every room. That makes every room of your home, of your apartment, smart. And last but not least, this technology, it was two weeks ago, has just been validated by the French regulator as not being an electrical heating system. The French regulator said, okay, this is a carbonless heating system. Our model is proved by major clients. On the computing side, we are operating more than 5,000 cores, and we are mainly working for banks. Um, the, for example, for BNP Paribas, we are running 5% of the risk analysis computation of the BNP Paribas trading floor in Paris. Just to give you an example, if you take all the computation required by one of these two banks and you transfer everything on QRADs, you could, heave, you could heat 10,000 people a year. If you render the whole uh, animation of an blockb American blockbuster like Pixar, for example, you could heat 2,000 people a year. So that's for the computing part. On the heating part, we have now um, more than 400 units deployed for more than two years. We are hitting around 100 households, and we plan to deploy additional 346 units at the beginning of next year in the city of Bordeaux. Um, today, we have a $1 million turnover in 2015 with a positive net income, and um, we plan to to, to, to succeed 20 million, uh, more than $20 million sales by 2018. Uh, we do that through our different products. Of course, the QRAD. We are going to launch the third generation of machine um, in January at the Consumer Electronic Show in Vegas now. Um, we have also a system that is able to generate hot air. And we are starting to work on a system which is able to heat water, a boiling system. And on the platform, we are um, now working on an adaptation of the, of the platform because some of our banking clients, they want to use this software platform on premises internally to manage their computation grid. And in this way, they, are, they can get rid of a lot of expensive licenses 
and they are ready for the cloud. They will be able to, to send, if they have peak in computation, they can send this computation. They are ready to send it for, on, the, on the curate farm. We are a team of experienced and complementary um, engineers and MBAs. Um, three of us, we have a long experience in entrepreneurship. And 90% um, of our people are software engineers. I insist on that. Uh, we plan to enter the US market um, next year. We already have the first contact with the US peer agency. Uh, as I said, we will be at the CES in January in Vegas. And um, we have under process the extension of our patent for the US, for the US market. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Miroslav. That was great. I, I have one question. Um, well, no, let's go with your question over here. Okay. Stage, stage right. Okay. Uh, well, I have to ask that question. I remember times when uh, we were moving IT infrastructure to cloud and everyone worried about security. Now you are saying cloud and distributed on very unsecure premises, every house, every building. Mm -hmm. How are you able to convince bank to give you a service, mm -hmm. and how did you handle the security of the service? Okay. First of all, it was a long process. To sell one banking contract, it takes us one to two years. One year for BNP Paribas, two years for Société Générale. Then the first thing is that we are not doing hosting or storage. These machines are computing machines. Data comes in, it's crunched, computed, and the client gets the results. So it's not persistent storage, okay? That's very important to understand. Then of course, the security is not something which is specific to Carnot. Uh, BNP Paribas uh, or Société Générale, they are also working with Amazon. It means they have the same problem of security sending data out of the, out of the bank to, to a data center, okay? So we have the, I would say, art, um, art answers all our data is encrypted, software en encryption, from the client to the machine. And then, then we also use the TPM um, encryption part. Uh, it's, it's a hardware encryption system on the, on the machines. And I would add, perhaps, to finish, that we are distributed. Of course, it's always a, um, possible to hack a radiator. If, if you do that, you will have part of something at, at, at a time, you know. You will not have the whole thing, you know? So I would say that the distribution some, somehow is, contributes to the, to the protection to that. If you hack a data center, because this is possible too, you have everything in one place, you see? So of course, to, to, to finish the, the question, yes, we have this encryption and we have regular audits from the banks. The last one was performed by Atos. And so we have a process audit on, on the security and also the, the, the technical, technical audit on our system regularly. Here at the center. Yes, I wanted to find out, what do you do with the heat during uh, August in Paris? That's a good question. There are two questions in your, in, your, in your question. It's the summer part and the winter part. Because how do you do in winter if you don't have enough computation to heat people 100%? So, Yes, um, to, deplo to, to be able to serve 1,000 cores for BNP Paribas all year long, because even they need computation even in summer, we deploy 3,000 cores. So what we are doing, and that's the, the, that's the big part of the QR, we are regulating the, the, the speed of the processors and the heat emitted by the processors. In winter, for example, we will have one QRAD with four processors working full capacity. In summer, you will have only one processor in, in one QRAD working 50% of the capacity. And then the heat emitted by the processor is around 50 watts. It's less that your human being is emitting in, in the room. So it's, it's nothing. So in summer, we are distributing much more the computation. And given that our farm is oversized, we have huge capacities in, in, in winter. So what, what do we do in winter? Uh, in addition to our um, paying and priority jobs, we are injecting uh, free computation. Free computation is very important for in our model 
because that's the, the, it's what will adapt the needs for heating and the need for computing. So, for example, in the winter, we are injecting a lot of, we offered a lot of computation for the Blender Foundation. We uh, make uh, computation for the research against cancer. And we select the projects we are qualifying for, the, for this free computation. So we have a lot of free computation in winter with a mix of computation, paying and free. And of course, when you are turning down the, the heater, the first computation, which is put aside, is the free one. Other quick question. Um, what, what about noise? Do the units... No, no noise. That's, that was the hardware challenge. It was to, to remove the fan. We have, in this machine, uh, we ha you have no fans. You have no hard drives. All the computation are executed in RAM. So you, ha you have no mobile parts. And this also reinforced the strength of the machine. We have no, um, uh, no problems on the, on, the, on the hardware because, because we have removed the, 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 the mobile parts of the machine. Great. Jeff, over here. Several questions, um, and I'll try and keep it limited. I can come find you in the other room. So first is an observation. I think you just had have an opportunity to buy a big chunk of the Internet of Things. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I want to pick up on the, on the cooling side, so summer use. Um, one of the thoughts in, in people are working on are ways to you know, shrink down the size of heat pumps. Mm -hmm. And have you looked at all about at the opportunity to do that, maybe more in commercial spaces where they're going to use potentially more heating units. But that's, that's sort of one question there, and I'll start with that one. Okay, so the question, if I understood well, is if we can do cooling system with this. Yes, absolutely, it's possible. Uh, we had the project with the French CNRS uh, on that. We didn't start it because of the problem of, it, it, it was not financed so far. Uh, how do we do R&D at, at Carnot? Uh, we are not do, doing the R&D with our own money. We start the R&D when we have a grants or something to, to, to make it, we, because we have investors and we have to spend this money on, on business. So uh, yes, technically it's possible, but it implies um, additional investment. Probably it will result on a more expensive machine to install and to maintain. So it pro we would like to have this milestone on our roadmap, but so far it's not the case. So on the follow, thank you. Good. Um, the follow-up question is just looking a little expand on sort of where your revenue is now, and then how you would use one of the awards, a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Today our revenues are we have a small revenue on the machine, because uh, when we are installing the machine, people even if they don't pay for the electricity, they have to buy the machine. So they if they can buy it on one shot, or they can have a leasing of the machine. And major part of our revenue is on the computing, computing part. The computing part is financing the electricity, the maintenance, and also the renewal of the machine. Because every five years, we are able to change completely the machine because we have to renew the processors. So the good news for the customer heating one is that he will have a brand new machine for free every five years with all the smart sensors updated. Uh, and so that's why we are saying that we are not only selling one smart device at one time. We are giving access to um, smart home technology, uh, but which will e evolve because, of course, the sensors in five years will be completely different. Right here. So, so there's a lot of benefits with the technology, uh -huh. but, uh, and you may have said this, but I missed it. What is the capital avoidance? going with your system versus a conventional data farm? Okay, you're talking about the computing part. Oh, and the computing part. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Today, um, computing are in uh, everywhere, I would say. Uh, our market is today, today uh, restricted to what we call batch computing. Batch computing is opposite to real-time computing. For, for example, for banks, we will never do today algo trading, okay? Um, so batch computing is not real-time computing. And in this batch computing market, we can do only the computing which, is, which we can distribute. Some computing you cannot distribute because the computing is very dependent. One processor is dependent from the result of the other processors and they have to share the, share the memory, et cetera, et cetera. So, but for example, if you take the banking industry, 90% of the computation done with the banks 
are batch computing and distributed computing. So today we are performing 5% of the computing capacity of BNP Paribas, but um, now we have discussions to operate 10 times more, um, 10 times more score. So, but it's, it's long discussions. Miroslav Sassani, thank you. Thank you very Great much. Great job. <laughs>